Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Sam, or Chaotic, and welcome back to another GTA 5 video here on my channel. Now in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing the all-new Vapid Cara Cara, which, as of making this video, hasn't been released yet in GTA Online, but will be released tomorrow on Tuesday, April 3rd, alongside a new adversary mode named Targeted Assault, which we'll be discussing more later on in the video. But in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing this new vehicle as well as sharing 17 things with you guys that you need to know about this vehicle before it's released in GTA Online. So let's go ahead then and get straight into things. So upon releasing tomorrow, it will be available to purchase on the Warstock Cash and Carry website for a price of $1,775,000. Which yes, makes this a pretty expensive vehicle. Of course, it is weaponized from standard, it will have a minigun turret in the back. Unfortunately, there is only a weaponized version of this available. There is no standard version or any way to remove that by customizing it. Which I myself am a little disappointed about, as I'm sure many of you guys are as well. Because in fairness, this vehicle is pretty cool and it would have been nice to have had a standard version without the weaponized turret in the back. But nevertheless, still a pretty awesome car, of course based upon the Ford Hennessy Velociraptor in real life. Which is basically a six-wheel version of the Ford F-150 Raptor, one of my favorite favorite vehicles in real life. Now upon releasing tomorrow into GTA Online, the Karakara will also be featured in a brand new adversary mode named Targeted Assault, which Rockstar have already announced on the Newswire to be releasing tomorrow. Now although it's not definite and it hasn't been confirmed, I've seen a few theories and some speculation in the last two weeks or so that this vehicle, when released tomorrow, won't actually be available to purchase straight away. You'll first of all have to unlock it if you want to buy it. And the reason I say that, two years ago or so, when Rockstar released the Shotaro Tron motorcycle into the game, it wasn't available straight away. You had to play the game mode it was featured in first, Deadline, to unlock the option to purchase it. And like I said, I'm not saying it's definite and that it's been confirmed that you'll first of all have to play Targeted Assault to unlock the option to purchase the Kara Kara, but it's certainly a possibility, and if tomorrow when this vehicle is released, you don't see the option to buy it from the Warstock Cash and Carry website, that's most likely the reason why. You'll have to play the new adversary mode it's featured in, Targeted Assault, to unlock it first of all. But I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. Anyway, moving on next to customization. Now, this vehicle, because it's weaponized, most likely won't be customizable at the Los Santos Customs. Now, as you guys can see in the gameplay, I'm able to drive into the custom shop because I'm using mods in story mode, but online is very different. So I'm suspecting that tomorrow, you won't have the option to take this into the custom shop, but instead, you'll only have the option to customize this in your Avenger or the Mobile Operations Center. So do bear that in mind, you'll have to own one of those if you want to customize it. But saying that, there aren't many customization options available for this, as you can see in the customization menu. Of course, there are all the basic upgrades, things such as the armor, the engine, and the brake upgrades, but it means there aren't really many things you can do to this, which is a real shame. This vehicle could have been really customizable, but Rockstar missed out on that opportunity. There are still one or two things that you can do to the Kara Kara, one of those things being the option to respray it and change the color. I changed the primary color to ultra blue, I thought that looked really nice, and there's also a second secondary color option as well, which changes the color of the rear coil springs, as you can see in the gameplay, but annoyingly, it also changes the color of the front grille as well. So although it would have been really nice to have had maybe red coil springs on the back, changing that to red also changes the front grille, which I want to keep black. So unfortunately, that kind of ruins things. It's kind of a shame Rockstar didn't have these two things separate, maybe having a completely separate grill option, or maybe a tertiary color for that instead, but no, Rockstar combined the two. Anyway, but moving on to the wheels next, and again, annoyingly, Rockstar have somehow managed to ruin these as well. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I personally like the stock wheels and tires this car comes with. They are basically a set of slightly altered and modified Rally Master wheels, which are usually found in the tuners category. And because they're tuner wheels, they'd usually have the tuner slick tires on. But what Rockstar have done is slightly adjust the sizing of these wheels and then put some nice off-road tires on which means the stock wheels are unique to this vehicle. But unfortunately, there is no way of changing the color of those wheels. Of course, in game, there is no way of changing the wheel color, and you can't use the iFruit glitch on these wheels because Rockstar set them to chrome, which means when you try and do the glitch, it does nothing whatsoever. So unfortunately, you're stuck with this wheel color. That, of course, being if you want to keep the stock wheels on the Kara Kara. 
Of course, you can just go and select a set of the Rally Master wheels from the tuners category, but do bear in mind, you won't get the off-road style tires that you get with this vehicle from stock, something which I feel improves the appearance of this car. Anyway, but moving on, and as you guys can see in the gameplay, I've now moved on to the final customization option in the Los Santos Customs, that being window tints. But that's not quite it yet for the customization of this vehicle, because as mentioned, this is a weaponized vehicle and will most likely only be customizable inside the MOC or the Avenger, which means there are customization options that can only be applied inside those. But of course, using mods in story mode, we can apply those through the menu. As you can see, one of those options being the ability to upgrade the rear turret from the stock one, the same one you get on the technical, to the 7.62mm minigun, one of the options you can get on the technical custom. And presumably this turret upgrade will cost the same that it does on the technical custom, which is $100,000. And finally, there's one more customization option available for this vehicle inside the Avenger and the MOC, that being the ability to fit a livery. And as you can see as I scroll through these options, these liveries are the standard weaponized and military themed ones that were added last year in the gun running update and are available for pretty much all weaponized vehicles in game and are now available for the new Kara Kara as well. So there we go, those are all the customization options then available for the Vapid Kara Kara. Like I said, a little disappointing, not as much as you guys might have expected to have for this vehicle, with it being a pretty cool and off-road style vehicle. Maybe someday Rockstar will release a standard version of this vehicle, or maybe just a four-wheel version of the F-150 Raptor. I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one, and hopefully if Rockstar do release that, we'll have loads of really cool off-road customizations for it, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, for the Kara Kara, there's not much at all. Anyway, moving on to a really cool feature I really like about the Kara Kara that comes with this vehicle from Standard, that being a light bar, which as you can see, is just above the grill, in between the grill and the hood, which at night just looks awesome when you activate it. Of course, going from the headlights to the full beam, this light bar turns on and just looks pretty badass from pretty much all angles. If I'm honest though, I'm very surprised this light bar is actually functional. I realize there are other cars in game that have their very own roof lights or light bars or individual lights in the grill and stuff like that. But this one is certainly very different to what we've seen from anything else in the game so far. And given the amount of effort Rockstar have put into this vehicle, judging by the amount of customization available for it, I think it's very surprising that things like this even work. But I'm very happy they do because this light bar is a very cool feature in my opinion. Anyway, moving on next to passenger capacity. Now this vehicle has space for five passengers, of course including the driver, the other front passenger, two people can sit in the back of the car, in the rear seats because this truck is a double cab and of course there's also one space as well for someone to operate the turret on the back making this a five seater now unfortunately there is no space or at least no ability for, for passengers to sit in the truck bed despite how long the vehicle is especially the truck bed which is a little disappointing now although i haven't done any comparisons or tests just yet between this and other vehicles that we have in gta online what i will say about this vehicle's performance just driving it around in story mode it seems pretty impressive this this thing is pretty quick, both off the line and in the terms of its acceleration, getting up to speed, which I find quite surprising despite the size and the length of this vehicle. It just feels really quick and very easy to drive around the city, and its handling as well is surprisingly very, very good, certainly much better than most other trucks and SUVs that we have in game. So in the terms of performance, it is definitely one of the better, if not the best SUV and truck that we have in game, and will certainly be a fun one and an easy one to use in the terms of driving around in GTA Online. Now in the terms of its top speed, it hits around 100 to 101 miles an hour or so on the straights pretty easily. So although it's obviously not the fastest vehicle in game, it's still pretty quick for an SUV and a truck, and it's definitely one of the faster ones in the category. But more importantly, it gets up to its top speed pretty quickly, whereas most other SUVs and trucks in game take quite some time. But the Kara Kara isn't just impressive on the road, it's also pretty impressive off-road as well. Again, I'd go as far as saying it's one of the better off-road vehicles that we have in GTA Online, because this thing is not just quick and easy to handle, but it has plenty of power and traction as well, making this perfect for pretty much all terrain. But unfortunately, there is a small downside to this. Although this car will probably be in the off-road category, because it's weaponized, it most likely won't be usable in any off-road races, which again, is very disappointing. So with this vehicle being weaponized then, of course it's pretty important to be armored and resistant to explosives and sticky bombs. So what's this vehicle like against sticky bombs? How many would it take to blow this thing up? 
Well, unfortunately, the result is very disappointing. It takes just one sticky bomb or one grenade to blow up the Kara Kara, which I guess isn't very surprising, and I'm sure many of you guys could have guessed without me telling you, but it's certainly very disappointing once again, especially seeing the expense and the cost of this vehicle to buy and fully customize, most likely costing around $2 million or so. Now this final thing I want to share with you guys is more of speculation and a guess on my part than a confirmed fact, but I believe the Vapid Karakara was a cut vehicle either from the Gunrunning update, Smuggler's Run, or the Doomsday Heist update. Simply because this vehicle is weaponized, it is the only one in this update and isn't exactly very fitting to the update that Rockstar released two weeks ago. So I believe this vehicle was made for one of the updates that Rockstar released last year, of course fitting into the weaponized updates that we got, but for whatever reason Rockstar didn't release it, maybe because there was too much content already and held it back to release as filler content in one of the up and coming updates. So there we go, those then are 17 things you guys need to know about the Vapid Kara Kara before it's released in GTA Online. So my overall opinion then on this car, I personally do really like the Vapid Kara Kara. It is a pretty cool vehicle, both appearance wise, performance as well, but unfortunately there are just one or two things that let this car down. So is it really worth buying for $1.75 million? Probably not, but it's entirely up to you guys whether you think it's worth buying or not. And of course I want to get your thoughts and feelings on this vehicle by leaving a comment right now. If you guys could also drop a like as well, it would of course be greatly appreciated and it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do, because I upload all the latest and the greatest Grand Theft Auto 5 content. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.